hands down the worst podcast on SK+. I definitely won't ever listen to them bagging on the Collider and Schmoes crew again. That's all we do. That's all we do here on this show. Everybody knows it, even Josh McCuga. I don't know what it was. You'd think that if we were going to be attacked recently, it would be uh, during the, the Starbucks commotion, but it was a week after... We were. It was just you know, little innocent us recapping Schmoes No Show number three eleven. Yet we got some hate in the comment section for the first time in, time in a while, and I kind of missed it, uh, to be honest. Because you know, you know me, Jay. Lately, I've been thriving off the negativity. Um, if only the uh, the uh, rest of the comments and the view count reflected any sort of positivity. Maybe that's what it is. As long as there's enough positivity to go with the negativity, that's when I'm thriving. But, uh, yeah, you really lost me when you started talking shit about Comic Book Girl 19. What did I say, what did I say last week? I said, I don't know why she's only on the anniversary shows. Right. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, my, my, favorite, my favorite thing in dealing with those types of comments is the fact that there are there are some actual good criticisms laced in there, but then they just go right off the deep end. It's just like, remember when you were talking shit about somebody you weren't even talking shit about? It's like, come on, man. do Just do a little bit better. I, it, come on. I, I just don't get it. And you're absolutely right. Sometimes there's like one little, there's a good point, and then they ruin it by saying something like, we're talking shit about Comic Book Girl 19, and then they've just lost all credibility, and they've ruined their chance to be taken seriously. I mean, it's insane. They also said I was talking shit about Makuga. I don't even remember mentioning Makuga at all, other than, I don't know, did we bring up, like, where, where's TV talk, I guess? Maybe it was some Maybe. kind of version of that, but... Yeah, something like that. But listen, I'm just gonna put. I'm just gonna let the record show right here on this episode, so people can reference it. I know I said the same thing in the comment, in response to the comment. But if you honestly thought that we were talking shit all the time about people at Collider and we were being disparaging to people in this space, do you think that they would let us have a show on the channel? It's just like wouldn't wouldn't we have been fired by now? It's just th think think for a minute, like what. Would this be allowed on SK Plus if that's all we did? And there was another comment. The show used to be amazing last year. Are you that era of the show was the most negative? It was the most negative. <laughs> now it's Ryan Snelling bragging about every conversation he has with the crew and then complaining when he doesn't get attention from them. That's a bit. It's an exaggeration. It's hyperbole. It's supposed to. It's supposed to make me look insignificant it's i'm making myself the butt of the joke and again i've said this a million times we can debate whether it's funny or not but at least be in on the joke and how could you think that that's real it's just i won't give this show a chance again unless hosts are hired that put the videos first not coffee and birthday parties uh, okay D what what is that it's all kayfabe, right? Or something like that. I don't, know. I, I don't know. I feel like that's something that Christian would do. And, you know, Christian might honestly not even get some of this. But it's just... The, the other complaint. This show used to be amazing last year. They talked about the videos in detail. Oh, yes. Sorry that we no longer talk about Tuesday's movie talk and how many Twitter questions they accepted. It's like, what do you, what do you want out of this show? This is... We have quality, even if we did, even if you could say that we talk shit, it would never be more than like 5% of the show where we actually discuss a plethora of topics, a wide variety of topics. We still talk about, it's just, I don't get it. Just guys, chill, be, be a part of, be a part of the show, be a part of the joke. That's all I got. Yeah. We we talk about SEO. Is that not deep enough for you? <laughs> now you've lost me. All right, here's the song. Welcome everyone to some version of After Schmo. My name is Ryan Snelling. My name is Jay Williams, and I couldn't get a vape in before that uh, intro happened. Just had to put that out there. 
okay, go ahead now because I'm going to say something that's pretty long winded. Go ahead, take your vape. I I don't know what we're going to do here today. And I was making a joke. I was making a joke and a reference to the, the, the whole coffee debacle that we had. I feel this whole episode of After Schmo might be an entire coffee debacle because I genuinely don't know what to do here today. I'm conflicted. And Jay, you, you know me. We talk a lot off air. You're often conflicted. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We talk a lot of, off air. We, also, we like to bust uh, Beardo's chops uh, as far as him moving away from what his show is traditionally about and doing things like movie reviews or whatever. We like to bust his chops when it comes to that, but I feel like that's what... What what are our options here? Like, am I supposed to just spew hot takes on the Jurassic World 2 trailer? Because I don't know how much more I can say about the same stuff at Collider right now, and I don't know what I can do with this pre-recorded Schmo's No Show that was just the entire <laughs> discussion. Like, part of me thinks, like... This should just be extremely laid back and casual, but then we run the risk of being confronted by management. <laughs> like, what are we supposed to do here, Jay? Yeah, well, I think part of the issue is the fact that we're not, you know, we record this show right the day after the live show goes up, or in this case, the pre recorded show. And we don't find out what's going on on the show until we see it the same time that everybody else does. So it's not like we could like, well, this week we know it's going to be pre-recorded. It just doesn't happen. But uh, before we go any further, I, I just want to say, I, I agree with you. I think with especially this episode more than any others, I've struggled in terms of what to talk about because we've ne- this is now the third consecutive week in a row where we've had a pre-recorded two-person table and allegedly Cody is there in the background hitting the record button and and I guess confirming things for them when they need things Googled. But I, it's not necessarily a commentary on the quality of the, of the episodes. I enjoy them. I enjoy the one-hour, two-person table. I enjoyed this past week's episode. It's just there's not a lot for us to break down. It, yeah, it, it, we're not even speaking to the style of the show. It, 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 I'm not complaining because it was a a, a two-person show. I'm, I'm just speaking specifically to what we got last night and you know it was a bunch of um last jedi prep and it was just it was so much discussion and we can't we can't do a whole lot with discussion it's it, we're not criticizing what we saw last night we're not judging anything it's like <laughs> just what do we do here on after Spo? i mean that's just what, <laughs> what i'm asking and right now i have i have a little ryan snelling on one shoulder saying spout hot takes talk about jurassic world 2 Talk about Batflick. And on the other side, I have Mark and Christian going, do the show no matter what. And, and I, I just, usually I listen to myself over Mark and Christian. So so who, who knows where this is going to go. But uh, yeah, I'm very conflicted tonight. I'm very, very conflicted. Yeah, it's, um, I think the best thing that we can do is to bring in a little flavor of sight and sound. And before Christian just turns off the uh, podcast, let me just hear me out. What I mean is give some hashtag transparency. And uh, I don't know, just be upfront about it. Be upfront and open about the fact that, yeah, th- there's just not a whole lot for us to break down and cover. And it, it is also sort of in result of the time of the year as well. There's not a lot to necessarily talk about with Collider. They haven't really implemented any new you know, content, so to speak. The top 50 just hit its halfway mark. I mean, I don't know how many different angles I can talk about that. Um, Did you watch uh, the ladies' night that came out today? No, I didn't get a chance to see the ladies' night. I know that there was a new. there's a new Makuga show that I did get to watch and just various different... You know, I take that back. A Makuga right. show. Oh, you didn't see the Makuga show that came out this week? I'm looking at the, the 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 video library on Collider right now. I don't see anything with Makuga. Oh, well, maybe they took it down. No, just kidding. Oh, they, I didn't read the books? Oh, how did I miss this? Oh, that's not even the one that I'm talking about. I'm talking about the uh, the one where he wants to bring back. The, it's called Movie Rants. What happened to the 80s dance montage? And oh. that's uh, the new Josh McCuga show. 
how in the world did I miss both of these? This isn't a joke. I, I remember seeing someone tweet that they were excited about the I didn't read the fucking books show. So when I when I went to go look on the YouTube channel, I didn't find it. So maybe maybe I saw the tweet like a day later and didn't look far back enough. I genuinely missed that and the the eighties dance montage video. I'm I'm just now seeing it for the first time and my mind is a little blown. I cannot believe that both of these got past me. I guess this would have been it would have been last weekend because it came out. The movie rants came out right before the Walking Dead review. So, anyway, my mind is uh, blown that I let that get away from me. Shame well, on me. Well, I think it's it's interesting. It's an interesting sort of thing, the fact that, that you miss, missed out on it. And I'm curious of how many other people missed out on it, too, potentially. Do you think that maybe when they come out with this new content and this, these new ideas, I mean, I don't necessarily know what their plan is with them. Maybe they're trying to get it to go viral and maybe it's not necessarily specifically for their subscriber base that usually comes every single week, but we know we get multiple episodes of Collider content on a daily basis. And it's, yeah. it's been a lot lately, not only their, their standard programming, but also a ton of, you know, star Wars sort of, bonus content that we get here and there. Do you think they run the risk of just burying some of these new things and not giving them a chance to sort of succeed on their own? Does that make sense? Well, I mean, I guess it kind of depends. We could say this about ladies night as well. Ladies night was one of those things we were given, uh, that, that knowledge was privy to us before it actually came out. So that was part of right. the, uh, the list of things that they were going to do after canceling TV talk, they were promising so all these things, and that's the only one that we can talk about, unfortunately. But I I expected that to happen um, in the uh, the time frame that everything else would happen. And I guess because they got a hot guest like Taika Waititi, that's something that they really wanted to put out then and there to uh, capitalize on the Thor Ragnarok hype. So th that that episode that, that it just showed up. It was just kind of thrown out there. And again, I, I was aware of it, but no one else was. It came out of complete nowhere for pretty much all of Collider's fan base. And it, w it wasn't really promoted that way, at least not, not you know, building up to it. And More so after the fact, because they, they right. reference it and they talk about it, yeah. And I think, I mean, can you say the same thing about these two videos? I, d I don't remember any announcement i don't remember seeing anything anywhere and that doesn't mean that you know makuga didn't tweet something out but i i wasn't prepped or prepared for either of those two videos and here we are three days later i've watched movie talk i've been in and out of these shows heroes and i don't recall mentions to any of them like i said it was that one rogue tweet from a fan otherwise i wouldn't have known that those videos came out at all yeah, it, it's just it's kind of uh, kind of a fascinating thing to sort of discuss because, again, just scrolling through. I mean, this video came out this this week, to my knowledge. I'm trying to look here real quick to see exactly when it came out. Um, but the fact that there are just so many other videos ahead of it that's that it's buried under, and I don't know. It's just kind of I'm kind of wondering if maybe they don't need to have some sort of cross promotional sort of schedule going on with some of their content and they do to a certain extent i'm not saying that they don't you know they'll promote heroes and this and that but um i, I don't know I, I don't really know a way to combat that i don't either <laughs> okay fair enough <laughs> but i mean i think that speaks volumes because and again yeah i host after smoke but there's there's no there's never a conversation between me and anyone at Collider that's like, hey, make sure that you check this out so that you can, like, it's still up to me. So in, in that sense, I am speaking to someone who just goes to the YouTube channel. And I probably go to the YouTube channel more than most people that subscribe to Collider. I just talked to a guy yesterday. I joined his Facebook group. And he watches Collider and Heroes, but I mentioned the term schmoes no and he needed clarification as to what that was right. and i thought that that was really really interesting by the way um i don't even know if we talked about that off air but um i i feel like i examine the channel uh, <laughs> a lot more than a lot of people 
And uh, anyway, I just think it's interesting that I was still completely unaware uh, of these two videos. Yeah, it's uh, the way I sort of deal with with all of the Collider content, because we've been pretty open that we we don't watch every single thing that happens um, just because there's so much to take in. I kind of do, though. I kind of do. (laughs) Okay, well, I think, yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm sort I sort of dip in and out in in various forms, whether it be the podcast feed or the mm. youtube channel or this and that but one of the way that i gauge it is sort of the a similar way that i ga- i gauge music topics i i understand that there's way too much music for me to cover every single thing that happens so i sort of uh I sort of rely on two things one the fact that the big stories and in, in collider's case the big videos are going to bubble their way up to the top where it's just unavoidable for me uh to really you know, look at and talk about and all of these things, but I'm also rely on the fans and the the yeah. people, the subscribers. Like we get tweets all the time. Hey, did you see this? What are your thoughts on this? And you know, that's sort of how I gauge interest across a wider spectrum. And, and of course, our sample size is much smaller, but I think um, I think for the most part, they do a pretty good job in keeping us in the know. I think one of the reasons why I might have. Uh, miss those videos is because at, all at once over the weekend they put out all of those Last Jedi interviews. Yes. It, it, there were a ton of those and let me, okay. Forget about Christian Harloff for a second, okay? What about Steve Frosty Weintraub who doesn't get nearly as much credit as he should. For one, he started well, I don't know, I don't know the whole backstory. He's the reason Collider is where it is today and he brought collider video he put it on the map before there was movie talk before there was heroes he was putting up interviews with celebrities and directors that's what started the collider video channel and he was put to the wayside and just now he, he is coming back up he's been on heroes a few times he's popping up more and more he did that whole thing with uh uh, I, I don't remember, was it Batfleck? He came out and did that interview, or the thing with Perry. Frosty doesn't get nearly enough screen time as he should, and he doesn't get enough credit. Forget Christian. Everyone's upset. Oh, Christian, he's the Star Wars guy. He's the Star Wars guy at Collider. He should have been there to interview Mark Hamill. He should have been there to interview John Boyega on behalf of Jedi Council. I forgot about Christian Harloff, because Steve Frosty Weintraub did a hell of a job, Jay. He did a hell of a job, and he asked, look, what's great about him, he doesn't make these press junkets, the the, the cliche, he doesn't ask the, the generic questions that all of these celebrities are tired of. He asked amazing questions. He represented the fandom here. He represented the fandom, asked things that I wanted to ask the cast and crew of Star Wars The Last Jedi. And I'm very, very thankful. I'm not necessarily in the slash film camp, the screen rant camp. Here at Collider, Steve Frosty Weintraub asks the great questions. The questions that I want to hear from the Star Wars cast, and no one is giving him credit. Great, great questions, Frosty. And I really, really appreciate your presence. And um, I, I'm, I'm glad Christian wasn't there. Well, I mean, look, two things. One, Christian asked some great questions in the uh, in, in in the Force Awakens stuff when he was with Fandango. So that is not that, as good as Frosty. Well, you know he he is the he is the Star Wars expert. Since when? But also, he wanted to be there, but it was his, it was his daughter's birthday, so he couldn't be there and i think sometimes we just have to weigh out our uh you know our priorities what about the uh room commentary did you watch that no i didn't um i've been i've been following along with some of the view trends of of collider lately and that that did very very well which is nice because it's such a community sort of film anyways and the way that you watch it and take it in you had somebody like mark ellis who had actually never seen it before which i thought was sort of a nice touch but just to tie into that some of the other view stuff going on obviously a lot of these star wars 
interviews did very, very well. But at the end of the day, it's still the shows that everybody loves that are pulling in the big numbers. I mean, you got, I'm looking at the, of the star Wars interviews, the Mark Hamill one has about 48,000 and the rest have, you know, between 20 to as low as like 15, but heroes right above it with 63,000. It's just interesting how even the stuff that can extend outside of colliders reach still isn't necessarily doing as as well i'm not saying it's not doing as well because of quality but it's not doing as well as some of their traditional programming uh the other thing that i will say is that it i'm also surprised that some of the like bonus star wars content that they've done like luke skywalker's best moments haven't done as well as i would have thought that they would because that's sort of what you get you know with like mojo and these sort of countdowns and and all this stuff and right it just it didn't really like i said it didn't really get outside of what other videos typically do in that sort of same camp on collider that has been a, a type of conversation that we've had in so many ways and so many forms on this show and the more time goes on and i see like some some of those videos that you think will go viral when they don't hit the way that you think they are i wonder if it's just something goofy with youtube's algorithm like and we talked a little bit about this on our end with sight and sound i mean we we were concerned or maybe not concerned but we talked about how uh the sight and sound youtube channel we put up a ton of we put up every podcast but we also put up a lot of videos and it's probably 50 50 maybe and you know i read somewhere that that might affect how youtube looks at your channel and if they see a bunch of videos with static images maybe it doesn't get uh optimized as well as another channel does and maybe even though we do put out a lot of videos maybe our channel the fact that it has podcasts and static image videos maybe it hurts the potential of all of our other videos so is it possible that it kind of works that way if if uh, Collider Video has these daily, maybe not daily, but movie talking heroes, you know what I'm talking about. These consistent, long form shows. Maybe maybe these uh, the, the smaller uh, videos that they are putting out are sort of still inside this bubble. Like maybe for whatever reason, YouTube's algorithm doesn't allow them to uh, flourish as much as they should. Jay, I don't know. That's just complete wild speculation, but YouTube sucks. <laughs> so I, I wouldn't suck, put it past yeah. them. I, it I can suck. It I think it's, I think a lot of it is just down to the fact that, that the traditional content that we know from Collider, it, it's scheduled. So people know when to look for it. They know when to expect it. Um, and it's not necessarily buried in their subscription feed by other things. So I think that has something to do with it, but I've been talking a lot here recently and I, th- I think it's it's backed up now that I'm looking at other channels that we're involved in. But this time of year just is not great for content like this, like YouTube content, podcast content. We, you know, we've seen a decrease in this month on Sight and Sound, and I've seen that same decrease in, in the past on other podcasts that I've I've done. And I think all of SK Plus is, is down a little bit um on the youtube channel from what they typically do it's not a cause for concern it's not an issue but it's just the time of year people are off doing other stuff that reminds me of when christian predicted that star wars (laughs) wouldn't have high box office because of the holidays (laughs) and it became the highest grossing movie in the country (laughs) right well, there's a you know there's a time and a place for everything. I remember back, and I mean, I'm not trying to get into some TV discussion here, but like I remember last year when the OA came out, which could have just been like any other show that Netflix puts out that doesn't have this sort of cultural impact and discussion, but yet they did it over the Christmas break period between Christmas and New Year's, and everybody watched it. It was just something that happened, and I think Star Wars sort of has that same effect. Obviously, it's a massive, massive property, but I think it does help the the fact that there's this dead period where people are off work and they can go to and do those things. Uh, so what I'm saying is basically Collider needs to stop putting out videos right now, send everybody home, and just come back to work in that period between Christmas and New Year's. That's what I'm saying. 
Yeah. Um, okay. I You're fired. Another- Go home. <laughs> I found another way to subdue my Jurassic World 2 takes. Um, here's something interesting. And this might conflict <laughs> with what we did at the top. This might sound a little critical, but I don't know if we've I don't know if we've ever had this kind of conversation before about our uh, favorite film pundits. I want to talk about Snep for a minute. Um I love Snep a lot. Um if anybody knows anything about me, you know I love characters. I, I don't like people to feel stiff and generic and cliche. I like people to be who they are. I also like them to, you know, to use Snep's word, I also like them to bring their own flavor and change things up. And I, I mean, the, the Christian and Snep doing shit rats when Campia hated it. Like, that, that's the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. Upset the established order. That's what Snep does. Snep is a rock star. He's a gangster. And I really, really love his takes on things. But, but, he has been a little reckless. Maybe reckless isn't the word. He, is, he has been livid over DC lately. And <laughs> he's been really... <laughs> Which is fine. Moon Knight is in the season of Punisher. I thought that's that's, where you're going with it. That's exactly where I'm going. So we were talking about, (laughs) we were talking about, or they were talking about Marvel and Fox in this whole making a deal thing. And did you watch Movie Talk when they did this and Riley was at the table? Riley was sitting between Schnepp and Ellis. Did you watch that episode? I didn't get to see it, but I I will say this. the, uh, The conversation was echoed oddly enough on jedi council they essentially did a mini movie talk episode on jedi council about this whole thing it was was strange yeah um basically riley's role ellis ellis more so than usual but ellis wasn't out of control riley was trying to keep a straight jacket on snap and ellis because they were wildly throwing things out uh, as far as speculating the, the whole Marvel and Fox deal. And Snep sometimes gets a little carried away and throws out things. Sometimes Snep has takes that I don't think have any bearing at all when it comes to reality. And sometimes he, <laughs> he just throws things, excuse me, throws things out sometimes. And sometimes I'm like, yeah, that's funny, but I don't think that has any credibility to it at all, which is hilarious because I've been a specific example actually kind of goes against the point. But for the past two years, I've heard nothing other than he thinks that phase four of the MCU will be about the Fantastic Four. And crazy enough, it might actually be the case, which is absolutely nuts. But there's a lot of other examples of him doing that. And he gets a little reckless and a little crazy. And I'm, I'm wondering if... The, these pundits need to just kind of be careful as far as realizing the responsibility they have to the fans because because sometimes I think if they're wild and they aren't, you know, if they aren't the voice of reason in film punditry, then it, it can kind of make the fandom that much more worse or that much more less reasonable? Am I am I making this problem too cosmic, or do do you see what I'm saying? No, I, I get I get where uh, the the take is coming from a hundred percent, but I think that we can't we can't expect the people in Collider to not be fans and not have the similar types of discussions that fans have, and I think that's where they're coming from to a certain extent. Yeah, but. I think what you're speaking to specifically are are people that watch Collider that have difficulty formulating their own opinions based on what's given. Like, not everything, not you know, the, the show would be a little boring if they were just regurgitating just straight news. Like, and I've talked before, like, mo- there needs to be more talk on movie talk. And sometimes you can go down weird rabbit holes of speculation that don't have a ton of bearings. That's just being a fan. That's what speculation is. And I, and I think what you're speaking to is like, Oh, Schnepp said that phase four is going to be fantastic Four. Schnepp said 
He never said that he knew positively. Like that was always speculation. But I'm it's not, the interpretation, right? I, I and I I don't at all have a problem with him <laughs> coming up with that theory because he didn't know he was right. He was speculating in the way that all of us fans speculate. But for two years, I just kind of rolled my eyes because I'm like, how? That's such a wild. At the time, it seemed so wild. And now that we're here, hindsight is twenty twenty. Disney's making a deal with Fox. He he's some kind of oracle. But he didn't know he was right. He just happened to be right. But right. maybe that's, again, maybe that's the wrong example. Because, again, I don't have a problem with him thinking that necessarily. But speaking specific, and I can't remember if this was yesterday's movie talk or Tuesday's, but Riley was playing this role of trying to keep them on the ground and, and keep them settled down. I think Riley was kind of concerned about how wild they were getting. And uh, maybe that was just because they were excitable. And, again, I, I, I don't want to... I don't want to make it seem like I have a problem with them getting excited. Okay, go back to what you said about there was that instance where Schnepp told Robert Meyer Burnett on an episode of Heroes that we could expect Moon Knight in the Punisher series. Now that we've all seen the Punisher, that's not the case. So what the hell was he talking about? As soon as I heard him say that, I texted you, Moon Knight in the Punisher, confirmed by John Schnepp. And Robert Meyer Burnett was also like, what? And Snep was like, yeah, just wait. It's like, and then that be- that was nothing. So right. it's like, Snep does that. And again, I love Snep, but, and, and maybe he's not the only one that does this, but these particular examples, wh- they were the catalyst to this conversation as far as where, should these people draw a line as far as speculating wildly and then being the voice of reason. Because, look, I have been a little exhausted by movie fandom lately, the movie fandom community, and I, I've really appreciated, and we speak on it here, I appreciate when Christian and Mark speak out against fans that are being dongs. Like, I, I really, really appreciate that. And so sometimes I feel like that maybe they're kind of feeding that engine when they when they act like that, and... So I, I'm not trying to be judgmental. I I am really trying to have a conversation with you about it. I'm not trying to make it well, seem the, like a. There's there is another a, a couple other examples of what you're talking about. One issue that I have. Let me just put this out there. One issue that I have with certain news outlets in the pop culture landscape, and not necessarily specifically to to movies, is that it, I've seen people on ESPN do this you will have pundits come on and speculate about something that could possibly be, but it be so loose that they're like, uh, the Patriots are going to be signing uh, Chad Ochocinco could be as early as tomorrow. And it's like, well, no shit, because (laughs) you're right. It could be as early as tomorrow because tomorrow follows today but it also could be five months from now. You know, like it's just like the right. very loose type of thing. I'm not saying Clyder does that, but um, that that is a thing. Another example that me personally, I struggle with from time to time. It's not not like th- this isn't a negative thing by any means. But Christian on Jedi Council, we know that Christian runs in some circles with Star Wars and is privy to some knowledge of Star Wars that maybe sometimes he can't even talk about. Soon to be replaced by Frosty, but go ahead. And I think there are times, especially initially when I first started watching, like there were things that he would say that I was like, man, I don't know if I agree with that, but I'm worried to say that I don't agree with it because of the knowledge that he might carry. Like for, for a while, um, leading up to Star Wars Celebration, he was just so, so, so adamant that they were going to announce this Obi-Wan film. I even remember them doing the live Jedi, like uh, Jedi Council at Star Wars right. Celebration, and he made the statement because it hadn't happened yet. He, he, he like exclaimed, I know we're getting this Obi-Wan movie. I know it. I can feel it. Right. And, you know, obviously down the pipe that that probably is going to be the case but like you know even he's been going on these rants lately and we'll talk more about it later about the uh the old republic comments from ryan johnson and this and that and i get where he's coming from with that whole conversation but he's just so sure that 
the stories are going to be that he's developing are going to take place in that era. I'm not necessarily saying that he's ruling out that that's not going to be the case, but I'm I do wonder sometimes if maybe it's not his own fandom and his own want uh, that's right. really leading that charge as opposed to Christian saying to himself like. Uh, know that I'm I'm confident in my pundit punditry abilities that it's going to take place in this era this is uh this is interesting because in general my thoughts on sports I, I just find sports commentary uninteresting and I know that Collider likes to I, I I think the easy label for Collider if you were to tell anybody what it was it, it, it's a sports center or movie talk is the sports center I guess Collider video is the ESPN for uh, entertainment news and and entertainment shows and I like that approach, but what's so inter- uninteresting about sports commentary for me, I don't like sports radio, and that's why I listen to Lebetard, and I'll, I'll bring that up back up in a minute, but it's like, to your point, it, it in February, there are already people on ESPN that are predicting who's going to win the World Series, and those kind of conversations literally want to make me want to rip my arm off, because they're so stupid. And and there's no way in absolute hell that they can know. Like, of I know that they're there's it's predictions, but it's like it's it just feels like such a pointless conversation when there are so many variables and so much time and so many factors that come into play. It's just like I don't want. I'm not interested in that at all. And in the same way that I'm not interested in any uh, um, press conference after a game to hear just coaches say at the end of the day you know we we worked as hard as we could it's like so much of sports commentary is just nothingness and that's why I listen to someone like Dan Lebetard because he ignores all of that and is completely uninterested in that as well and so and I'm not saying that they should do the same stuff it's just like I, I never realized that Collider has some of those um, habits as well. And then, you know, here we are talking about what may or may not be uh, uninteresting or I don't know if harmful is the word either. I, I don't really want to be hyperbolic here, but it, it just it's definitely worth bringing up, I think. Yeah, I mean, you- I mean, we're having an honest conversation about it. And listen, I get it. Like, we're both content creators as well. Like, that's sort of what we're here to do and to a certain extent that's what audiences want i mean if we're being completely frank about it like audiences feed off that speculation oh what if there could be uh you know something said in in older republic you know old republic times and star wars whatever the case may be people like that and they feed off of it it's just uh, i think i think more than anything there's there's smarter ways to do it and there's less smart ways to do it. And I, I'm not, again, not pointing fingers that that's actually what's going on. It's just an overall conversation about how these shows are sort of conducted and ran. But you also have to take into consideration, too, these are individuals on these shows, pundits, so to speak, that are doing these shows sometimes multiple times every single day. So it's like, you know, you have to figure out something and be creative with what you talk about. So I get it. it. And they also aren't the people that have sources. They, they aren't frosty. They aren't someone who writes editorials or write out movie news. They right. are, they are reactionary, and they offer discussions. So, and and they don't claim to do that. Yeah, Schnepp might know someone on the inside at Warner Brothers, but that's not what their role is. So, I guess maybe the the best way to sort of close this conversation is kind of label it as whose responsibility is it? Is it theirs or ours? to understand what it is that they're actually doing and to, you know, chill the hell out with some of these things. Yeah, no, listen, that's one of the biggest reasons. Well, that's one of the main reasons I had such a big problem with the whole uh, Campia thing, talking about Ben Affleck leaving the Batman film back in the day. Obviously, we've seen it play out, and he's validated in that sense, but, but the way it was presented was from that point of complete, uh, speculation uh, based on uh, based on a source but it was like presented as you know don't don't take this to the bank don't don't yeah. go to the bank with this but then the second people were sort of like 
I don't even know if that's something you should really be bringing up so loosely. It was almost like defensive. Well, don't don't get mad at me because I'm speculating about it. But it's like, well, again, it's that responsibility thing. It's just there's a level to it, man. I don't know. Uh, um, I found another conversation that we can have to postpone my Jurassic World two take. Um, we we talked earlier, or you mentioned a second ago, uh, how y- you want movie talk to be more about having a discussion instead of just relaying movie news. And so we really, really try to glorify when they do this. And most recently, there was a really there was a game changing conversation about Rotten Tomatoes recently. And it was Ellis and Schnepp versus Christian. <laughs> and and that actually wasn't the part I was so interested in, but it was the fact that they let it breathe and they really examined yep. it. And they all came from different points of view and really talked about this issue. And I loved it. And it was the best that movie talk had ever been. And I think that subtle, I, I don't know if they got it from us or not, but I've noticed well, the change. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's take credit for it. How about that? Uh, I've noticed that recently with these bigger topics like the whole Fox and Marvel thing I think Ellis knows there's always a second round of discussion so yes in a standard segment of movie talk when there's news it's let's say the first bit of news it goes to Ellis he pitches it to Schnepp then it's pitched to Riley and then they go to the next segment but usually when you get a big segment like this I've noticed that Ellis goes back around one more time and poses other questions. Like, yeah, he poses questions in general, but he does it a second time, and it, and it lets that conversation breathe more. And I don't know if it's because I've noticed it that I think they're becoming more conscious of it, or maybe they've been doing it all along. I don't know. But it's something that I did notice, and I really, really appreciate that. I, I agree 100%, and that's one of the things that I've, I've noticed about movie talk that sort of changed is that they've been a little bit more liberal with uh, in terms of and this has all, all been like you said a subtle change but they've been more liberal with following the sidebar and the rundown and everything and and I appreciate that because you know there's nothing worse than a conversation just getting good and not not letting it sort of naturally peter out and I, uh, I I love that as somebody that just enjoys content like that. And the show in general has just become more – it's become more concise. We're getting less people on the table. The That sidebar seems to be getting shorter where they're just talking about big topic discussions as opposed to fluff. And I think sometimes they have that in the, in the pipe just in case they want to – you know, just in case that conversation doesn't pan out as long as they think it's going to be, they have other stuff that they can get to that might be a little bit smaller. But I appreciate it. Um, you know what I was thinking about today? How is it? And I want to talk about Makuga here for a minute. But, but I I feel like no one ever gets fired from Collider Video. I'm wondering what like HR is like over there, but like. Yeah, people have come and gone, and like Campia, you know, there's the joke that he just keeps coming back and leaving again. But aside from all that, Makuga, they took his show away. <laughs> you and I off air were like, now what's he going to do? TV Talk has been canceled for like a month or so, and we just got a, <laughs> a little bit of a, a taste of what Makuga might be doing. And again, this is this is before I was privy to those, those two shows that he put out. Um He's doing social media for for them on Instagram now, and maybe maybe a little bit on Twitter too. I want to talk about how I found out about this. And if then that's I wanna... true, we, we let's be honest about it. We don't. Okay. I I don't. We don't necessarily know if that's one hundred percent true or not. Like that could be shtick. It could be part of a, a joke, but it could also be true. Well, I'll tell you why I don't think so. I I don't think it's a shtick. Is my, my point. In the past two days, there have been nine random meme pictures posted on their Instagram. And when you look at them, you can tell that they came from the mind of Josh McCuga. And that's not something that they did before. So I think it's, I, yes, it's funny and it's a joke. But at the same time, I do think that there is some level of him running social media because they've just let him go for two days and post random shit on their Instagram. 
let me let me tell you a, 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 sort of my first reaction to this. By the way, it actually started the day before last. I got followed on Twitter by Collider Video. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, de- and, it's definitely not Makuga then. Yeah, well, that's what I was gonna say. Like, what I saw that I looked at my not- notification, I go, huh? And I, the voice of the narrator on SpongeBob popped into my head, and I just heard. Two years later, <laughs> Collider Video followed me on Twitter. So I was like, hmm, that's interesting. Is this Fernandez's way of trying to reach out to me? And then the next day happened. I'm in bed. It's like 3 o'clock in the morning. And I was browsing through social media. I get on Snapchat. I usually had the volume turned down because if I don't, it's usually just girls screaming at some concert that I don't want to be at, whatever. And Bruno so Mars. I go, yeah. So I go to Instagram, my volume is down. So all of those all of the stories that he posted, I didn't know he was behind the camera. I didn't know he was speaking. I just saw all of our collider pundits doing a bunch of different things. And then the last one, of course, is him like signing off. It's like that's that's peculiar. For one, I laughed my ass off. And I, I felt bad later because I genuinely want Makuga to work at Collider Video but it was just such a funny thing and I thought that I I could hear you laughing at it as well like Makuga is running social media now I guess that's what he has to do but then I thought back to the the getting followed on Twitter so I was like maybe Makuga is like not throwing shade but like a subtle joke was that he would follow me back on Twitter because I have campaigned for that for two years but he did it with Collider Video's account (laughs) And not his own. I just it, the discovery of all of this was really fascinating. But uh, but yeah, what do what do you think about all this? I just threw out like three topics: him running social media and uh, people not getting fired at Collider Video. They continue to just absorb anyone who walks by that building, and they uh, employ like fifty people for whatever reason. Yeah, I don't really have it much of a take on on the people getting fired but my take on josh mccougar running social media i I, if it's true i would hope that he doesn't see it as like some sort of demotion maybe he asked for it i don't know and i hope other people don't see it that way either i mean i can hear the tv talk fans you cancel tv talk to be the social media person for collider it's just like just no so I, i i wish that he would really take the you know take the challenge and Execute it as best as possible. I mean, if he can, ju- if he's just in charge of it, and no one's really telling him what to do and what to post and all this other stuff. I mean, I'm sure that people, there's people that will, but if it were me and that task was given to me, and maybe I didn't expect to have it, I would try to do every single thing that I possibly could to be, f- first of all, fantastic at it. Just like I want to, I want to be amazing at this. I want to elevate it to another level. You know, we had talked before about like if we had more time and more capabilities to do it that we I would love to turn our Instagram feed as sight and sound into its own like thing where you went there specifically for the content that you get on Instagram you know not necessarily just hey here's a picture of of a news story that posted but there's actual value to be gained from that so I hope if if you know, if he is actually taking up this challenge that he, he runs with it and he develops some really good quality content that everybody wants to see. Before somebody comments, they're talking shit about Makuga. Jay and I are students of Gary Vaynerchuk, and we know the value of posting on social media. So, <laughs> yeah, we like to laugh and tease, but there's no uh, discounting how valuable that actually is. So, but of course, again, th- this all came up before I even knew that Makuga was doing those other shows. So it was just sort of if, funny how it was presented to me. If Josh Makuga is freely at his own disposal running social media, if he wanted to do TV talk, he could do it on Instagram Live or Facebook Live, anything like that. He could talk about TV until he can't talk about TV anymore. That's the type of stuff that I'm saying, like, yeah, let's get some good content. Let's get some good content out there. Yeah, definitely. Um, I have, like, three observations about the Schmoes No Show. 
And uh, I think we're done, unless you have anything that you'd like to bring up. Well, I have a whole set of notes that I can go over. Um, the only thing I do want to bring up before I do get into my notes is, uh, so Ace was not on the show this week. Yeah. And he <laughs> he was uh, he had the hammer laid down on him on social media by Christian uh, <laughs> with the whole old republic talk basically if you didn't know christian's been upset at certain news outlets reporting misreporting that ryan johnson had stated that there is that he is absolutely not doing something in star wars in the old republic where that's not what he said he just said that he wants to tell new stories and he doesn't know what those are going to be and if you i mean if you think about that that could be an old Repu republic. It could not be. Nothing is in stone, but to say that it's not is just not. It's not good news reporting. Well, I guess Ace had just retweeted one of these posts, and f strangely enough, from the Schmoes No account, Christian said, uh, "People need to stop spreading this." No, he said he just what said something say? like he said, "This isn't true. Stop that." <laughs> yeah, it's just like. <laughs> what what hap what happened to tweet what you won? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just giving him a hard time. But oh. uh that was sort of my own takeaway. Um and also I guess before we get into it, SK Plus stuff, I haven't really kept up on it much this I haven't really kept up on much podcast stuff this week. I've been busy at my day job, which is where I normally take in podcast content, but um I didn't see a beardo this week, saw some wangers stuff going on i pleaded to i we just had rb3 on our uh, mr robot discussion so you know i'm always a big fan of rb3 but now i feel like a like a connection with him and i pleaded to he and ace that uh either the next episode he and ace he and ace rb3 and ace uh, ace and him he. and ace ace and he <laughs> uh i pleaded to them that either on the next episode or in the next few episodes that they do a paul thomas anderson meaning of i would really like to hear yeah. that yeah there was no beardo and, and beardo couldn't get last week i announced that we were we were going to tease my episode of don't be a, beard, be a beardo and he couldn't even finish the teaser so i don't know when that's coming out thanks a lot not only did he not put out his own show but he affected our show directly how disappointing i i was gonna do uh my new game that i launched last week the whole quote you know who said it on SK Plus? And my, but it was going to be a joke. And my joke was going to be, who said it this week on SK Plus? Okay, who said it? Who said that? <laughs> Beardo. It was Beardo, because he didn't say anything. <laughs> right. But, but, but I didn't want to do it because I thought it would be too mean, and people would think that we were talking shit about him. So yeah, yeah. Um, I loved what Ryan Johnson said in that interview, by the way. And it was some, and I'm paraphrasing, something about how he knows that as a fan, it's easy to go directly to the Old Republic when it comes to imagining what the next trilogy could be like. But that's just because we aren't on the inside. We, It's just, we only pick and choose from what we know. And beyond that, we can't imagine anything else. So when you hear more Star Wars, it's like, oh, it has to be Old Republic. And Ryan Johnson made that point. That right there was my exact point inside of the hot take that I spewed to Christian Harloff that one day. I talked about it last week. I had this hot take I wanted on Jedi Council, and that was it. And I'm so disappointed that Ryan Johnson got it in front of me and said it. Ugh. Well, I mean, we've, it, we, we've had those discussions ourselves. I mean, we're not getting into a movie discussion, but uh, we've we had could. those discussions ourselves that... You know, if you were given a blank slate for Star Wars, why wouldn't you want to write canon, you know, and be cemented in, in future? Yeah. And obviously you could do that with Old Republic stuff, but I don't but like But it doesn't have to be the Old Republic that you know. Like, yeah. it, could, it could be Old Republic and that not be a problem, but it doesn't have to do with anything that you know. It could be an entirely different and new Old Republic. Right, that's probably, that's, what, uh, that's probably what Christian's uh, going to say, but... Christian, I don't think it's going to be Old Republic. <laughs> the, the other thing that I'll say with that Ace stuff is that he was so bitter about it, he actually brought it up on Jedi Council, too. <laughs> he addressed Ace on Jedi Council. He was like, listen, Ace. It was And it was pretty funny. funny. Yeah. That's great. 
I'm glad uh, Ace could get a shout out on uh, Jedi Council. So um, there goes Snelling again. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's what that's what we're all thinking. Let's, <laughs> let's get into these. Let's get into this Schmoes No Show. I've got these notes. They're itching. Um, They're itching to yeah. be read. Schmoes No Show, three eleven. Is that what it was? No, three twelve. Yeah, three twelve. Okay, here we go with uh, J. Williams' stream of consciousness notes for Schmoes No Show three twelve. Take it away. These are your Schmoes No stream of conscious notes, brought to you by SightSoundPod.com, where you can buy new merchandise. Schmoes unboxing, as if Collider didn't do it well enough the first time. Hard to believe Star Wars is next week. It doesn't feel like Christmas. I don't mind these more stripped down shows. I'm also an aisle guy. No one gets between myself and my PP. Amazing Spin Doctors reference. I like the red carpet experience slash premiere talk. Anyone that doesn't like it, that gets on this, eh, we don't want to hear about your privileged life. Shut it. These are fans like we are, and it's a natural human response to be excited and to want to talk about your experience. She bangs, she bangs, comment from Ken is totally a sight and sound Jay Williams style interjection. He's been listening. Shout out to Star Wars stance socks. Ken, throw your clip... Wait, what is it? Ken, throw your clip-on phone case away. The Screener Circle, a new podcast on SK+. Liking British office over American office is a hipster take. I like that they both said it was more of their problem than the show's problem. Whoa, what an abrupt ending. And those are your schmoes no stream of conscious notes brought to you by SightSoundPod.com where you can buy new merchandise. Not only am I shocked that you actually had notes, I'm shocked that you had that many notes. Like, you got started, and I was like, okay, well, he's only going to have, like, two or three of these. I, I'm i shocked. You had just as many as you normally do for a two-hour show. And uh, I don't know how you did it. Great job. Yeah, um, it was... Uh, no, I was entertained by the show. I, I liked the show. I had fun yeah. on it. It was nice to get to see... Listen, the thing that I took away from this show the most is that we just don't get ken enough like this you know yeah. i mean he has his own podcast he has the knapsack files but he doesn't force really, center yeah force he doesn't really get like this we don't get the the more you know lifestyle ken knapsack that much and, and i i just i really appreciated it and we we kind of got to see what this show looked like the sort of two-person table with Mark full fully leading the charge and and I really liked it too because I think we've gotten so used to seeing Mark be the guy that passes the ball around where he just didn't have to do that as much I just thought he led the conversation really really well what was this guideline life for those of you who don't know Jay and I share a YouTube channel for sight and sound so uh, I use it as my own personal YouTube channel. So I watch all of the Collider. I watch all of my content via our YouTube channel. Um, and Mark and Christian stole the segment that I wanted to do, which was guess who watched what on your uh, YouTube account. But thank God they only did that once. So maybe we can steal it uh, after the uh, statute of limitations runs out on that. But um, I think the Schmoes No Show, w- when I got to it, it was already 30 minutes into it so i assume that you already had you were watching it or you had watched some of it right so when i i brought it up on my xbox i had to re rewind it uh, cuz there's for whatever reason there's not a back button so i i, I rewound it rewinded it rewound it and i'm watching it i'm watching 30 minutes go by backwards and watching those random freeze frames of Ken progressively going backwards it looked like the happiest Ken has been in years it was so funny again I'm watching freeze frames backwards and my first thought was Ken 
looks like he's going to kill on this show. <laughs> and I saw, I wasn't the only person who's, who noticed this. I saw some person tweet and tag Ken and Grace. And they said something along the lines of, man, ever since Ken and Grace started dating, uh, it, it, he's had some kind of newfound confidence that I've never seen before. And uh, for one, I thought it was funny because it was so true. But it was also funny because he tagged Ken and Grace. And I can't imagine what that's like to be Ken and uh, Grace and see someone tweet and comment on your relationship like that. Like, it's it's somehow a, a, a middle ground from where Jay and I reside and where Brad and Angelina sit on Celebrity Magazines. Like, the fact that, like, people are invested. And we're guilty of talking about it on the show, too. But it's just got to be so weird where Grace gets a tweet that's like, Yeah, my boy... <laughs> this guy says my boyfriend has a newfound confidence ever since dating me. It's like... It's so weird. Yeah, it's a little bit bizarre. I, I <laughs> for, for, for whatever reason, I paid attention to the comments section on YouTube for this episode, oh, which gross. were very, very, very unfortunate. Um, you know, people like, oh, my God, all this show has become is just ads. It's like, God. Oh, no, I, I do want to talk about that. That's actually not in my notes. Okay. But that's something that I wanted to talk about with you today. I think this is going to be pretty much the only discussion that we have because I'm pretty much done after this. I think it's interesting. I, I wonder if Christian, and maybe I'm I, I, I'm not trying to make them out to be dummies because they're not dummies. Um, they could both take me to school when it comes to uh, programming for YouTube. But what what's the strategy when it comes to debuting a Movies Anywhere sponsorship on an episode of the Schmozno Live Show, which they know will not perform as strongly as the traditional two-hour live show that has a plethora of guests. Like, it, it, it is known that these do not do well. And even after Schmo is a reflection. When we do shows like this, it, they do not do as well as when they have a two-hour show that has some kind of funny moment or controversy in it. So, I'm wondering, like, is there a conversation that they're having in the studio, like, can can we start this sponsorship with Movies Anywhere when we know that we're pretty much done for the year with the two-hour show? It's like, I wonder if that, like, or, or what if it, what if it, like, goes down the tube? Like, what if their sponsor isn't happy because they're putting out their endorsements yeah, on the, these types of shows. The, I just, I was fascinated by this. That's not really how it works. I mean, we're, we know of many, it's not? no, not at all because not, not all advertisement, um, Agreements are are incumbent by how an episode does. It, you you sell ads based on, es, especially potential. I mean, you you sell ads against the fact that you have two hundred whatever three hundred thousand subscribers that could potentially watch. If it doesn't perform, it doesn't perform. I mean, look at something like the FiOS thing that they do. Do do you think that people people automatically? Th- are just going to watch that because oh it's the schmoes and we're going i mean people know what that is but they're doing it because they were offered up money to do it and and that's just how that works i mean we're we're privy to the knowledge of certain advertisers who say here's this agreement that's in place and for everything that you sell, we we will give you money. But not all ads are necessarily done like that. It's the same for Super Bowl ads. Like there's obviously the Super Bowl is a major major event, but there's no guarantee that they're going to get those ratings, right? I mean, it's it's sort of built in based off of what you've done in the past. Well, I mean, so you don't think there's any sort of expectation when you're a company like Adam Tickets or Stardust or Movies Anywhere, and you look at what the schmoes know, what you look at what they do on their channel, and you look at how many subscribers they have versus like the average views. You don't think that there's some kind of like hesitation or maybe a disappointment when their their ads are run on shows like this. You you don't think there's any kind of any kind of version you don't think that mark and christian have never been addressed like we thought we were going we thought we were going to uh, be read on the two-hour live show that got this many hits like you don't think that's ever happened well, well there's all. two there's two things involved with that so there's one uh you can 
I'm sure there's probably like a tier system. I mean, you could say if the video does, I'm not saying this is how this is, but you could structure a deal where, uh, if your show does this many numbers, then you'll get this much amount of money. Or if it does this many numbers, it does this much amount of money, whatever the case may be. Then there's also a situation in place where, let's say, something like Stardust, the way they incorporated Stardust essentially handed a lot of Schmoville over on a silver platter to them that gives that gives Stardust the incentive to say we we want to come back man look look at what you guys did for us then Schmoes have a bargaining chip in place to say well now it's going to be a little bit more money because I mean I'm not again I'm not saying this is what they do this is just a strategy for you know dealing with stuff like this but you say we did all this for you the first time. We would like more money on this next one. Now, granted, I'm not saying that. <laughs> Listen, if yes, it would be way better if they did the full on show to help out their advertisers in that way. But it doesn't always necessarily have to do that. I mean, sometimes, sometimes you're approached by advertisers that you're not necessarily 100% invested in. I mean, we had a we we had a headphone company reach out to us that I'm totally glad they reached out to us and and you know, that's really cool and their products are pr- are pretty neat. But are they the headphones that I would recommend to somebody? No, not really, and it did feel a little weird after a while being like buy these headphones that I don't even know if I would necessarily buy myself, but if you want to. So, you know, there might be a little bit of that as well. Maybe they just don't necessarily want to have some of these advertisers all the time. Do you think you get this type of conversation on the Top 10 show? I don't think so. Do they talk about this on Critically Acclaimed? I don't think so. Do they do it on The Rundown? Uh -uh. (laughs) Uh-uh. Hey, real quick, just to go back to, here. just to go back to your point, I, I'm not discrediting what you're saying at all because that the, uh, it could have been structured like that. They might have just said, "Ah, we didn't really plan the show out this week, so this is what you're going to get." It that could be the case too. It, it could be any one of those scenarios that I just sort of laid out. Um, Speculation. Moon Knight on Punisher. Yeah, yeah, yeah very good. Um, I'm fascinated by <laughs> the topic of Beardo and Ken at Cody's wedding. Um, funniest line of the night, uh, Ken threw some shade, and it made me laugh. It, it also makes me laugh, and we talked about this before. It makes me laugh how like, Beardo's like, oh, yes, today's Wednesday. It's the Smoza Live show. And they're like, ah, we're doing a, a one-hour thing with me, Christian. You don't need to come by. And uh, So <laughs> Beardo hasn't been in the studio for like a month <laughs> because of how they do shows. Um I don't really have anything else other than um, I hope that everyone out in California, uh, even aside from everyone at Collider, I hope that everyone uh, is doing well. And these wildfires are insane. I have seen, I, I've probably seen the same video that everyone else has seen. It's been thrown around a lot. Joe Rogan even threw it out today. Danny Fernandez did. It's just, it's, it's got to be insane over there. And I hope everyone is doing well and staying safe. And uh, yeah. That's all I really got. Um, and whenever, whenever you're ready, I've got a Jurassic World two take for you. So I, I don't want that. In fact, I don't want that movie at all. It looks like trash. So that's that's something you you can hear about more on Sight and Sound Weekly. But uh, the last thing that I want to say is that I love everybody out there in Schmoville. We mm-hmm. we don't we don't talk shit about the Collider people as much as you might think that we do. Um, it looks like next week we are going to be getting the show that we know and love. They sort of hinted at that. Not that we don't love th- this version of the show, but we're going to be getting uh, everybody sort of uh, post going to the premiere Star Wars episode, which I'm excited to hear about. But here's the question I have for you, and it's sort of a hypothetical one. If you knew someone that was going to the premiere and you had the ability to ask them questions about how the movie was. Do you think that you would abuse that power and ask them how the movie was already have several times? Will you be doing that with star Wars? The last Jedi? Well, yeah. Same here. 
Or I might just let you do it first <laughs> and you tell me so I'm not bothering. Yeah, said let, person. let me be the social assassin. I ha- you know, you know about you know this about me. I have no problem uh putting myself out there even if it means embarrassing myself. I might get completely shut down, but I'm going to try my best to get some hot takes and you guys will never know about it. Um be looking yeah. for that DM, it's- Ken Napsack. I mean, the trailer, it looks like a movie. It looks like a movie I could get involved with. The trailer is pretty cool. You can find I'm me on social media at J Williams, J to the A to the Y to the E on Twitter and Instagram. It's the same for both. Where can they find you, Ryan? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at WhatUpSnail. J referenced it earlier. RB3 came on Sight and Sound. If you guys are watching Mr. Robot, and we know that there's, <laughs> there's not that many of you, if you guys are watching Mr. Robot, Come to Sight and Sound. Jay, myself, RB3 had a great discussion. RB3 basically admitted that he was a uh, cyber terrorist. Uh, so b- please be on the lookout for that. It was a really, really great episode. And I think that RB3 and Ace will join us again for the Mr. Robot Season 3 finale. If you're not watching Mr. Robot, you should. Season 2 is pretty disappointing for myself and Jay, but Season 3 has been great. Um... We've got, we have t-shirts if you want to support us uh, at sightsoundpod.com. And uh, look, I mean, it was essentially th- the entire plot synopsis that we got this week. And narratively, the trailer was the entire movie, but I'm fine with it. Last thing I'll say, it's list season. That's what we're calling uh, this whole end of the year thing. If you are at all a, a music fan, and if you're not a music fan and you're like, did anything good come out? In 2017, well, I've got you covered because next week, a week from the day that this episode drops, I'm going, and the same day that The Last Jedi comes out, I'm going to be giving you my top 10 standalone singles of the year list on the uh, Sight and Sound YouTube channel. And then the following week, I'm going to be doing my top 25 albums of the year. So stop by, hang out with me, and you'll walk away with some good music to listen to. I'm still working on the top 50 superhero movie list. It's a fan collective, but. Uh the fans exhaust me so i don't know how long it takes to do this see you later